Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Western Association of College Admissions Counseling. Um, we have some fantastic schools here today, um, and I will be your facilitator, and my name is Kelsey. A few housekeeping items before we get started tonight. Your camera and microphone are off, so you are muted and your video is off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. But you can, of course, ask questions with our question and answer button at the bottom of your screen, so feel free to ask our presenters any questions during the presentation. Um, we do have some more sessions um, online, so feel free to check those out as well. And our recording will be available um, right after this presentation at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Thank you all for being here today. And I will go ahead and turn it over to our schools. And first up, we have Miami University. Hey, everybody. Um, so let me get my screen sharing. There we go, looks like I'm all good. Um, so yeah, I am Joseph uh, with Miami University. Um, thanks so much for, for joining us at the, the virtual college fair tonight. Um, gonna go ahead and, and start it off just uh, talking about my school for a bit. We are based in Oxford, Ohio, um, not to be confused with Miami, Florida or University of Miami. Um, we're actually a really old school that was founded back in 1809. Um, you might've heard of us with the term public Ivy. Um, if you're wondering what that is, I'll go ahead and explain that in just a minute. And um, basically, yeah, we've got a lot of history that's uh, kind of has nothing to do with Miami, Florida. And so right off the bat, I'll go into kind of how we got our name, um, you know, a little bit more about the university and the history. So, uh, like I said, founded in 1809, and uh, we were uh, one of Ohio's first uh, public universities, uh, the 10th uh, oldest public university in the country, I believe. And our name actually comes from the Miami tribe. So that is a uh, indigenous tribe that used to inhabit the land um, far before us, before it was known as the state of Ohio. And uh, the area was called the Miami Valley region. So um, basically we you know, kept the name uh, to honor them and we have really good tribal relations on campus. And um, it's kind of, a, kind of a part of our culture and our history that you'll see quite often if you are on campus. Um, the phrase public ivy comes from a, a 1980s pretty prominent author that uh, had gone around looking for um, basically any public university that had an education that resembled that of a Ivy League within the country. And uh, thankfully, we were considered one of the original eight. Um, at Miami University, you know, being a public research university, definitely academics uh, and academic opportunities are going to be at the forefront. Um, so while we've got a really good community, we're in a pretty awesome spot and there's, you know, loads to do and a lot of fun to be had. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that you're, you know, getting set up uh, for your career um, academically. So with that, We've got about 17,000 students. Uh, so in that population, you know, you're going to have the amenities of a bigger school, you know, bigger public university, but you're definitely not going to be um, in too big of a crowd where you'll kind of get lost in the sea and have trouble, you know, with lecture hall style classes and, you know, 200 people, you know, in the, the same professor as you. Um, so yeah, we've got a good 17 to one student to faculty ratio, um, have really good internship opportunities. Um, and obviously with, you know, a smaller class size, you're not gonna be competing with as many students for those opportunities. And then um, we've got a pretty uniquely high uh, study abroad and um, research, student research program as well. Um, with that, we've got over a hundred majors, uh, 31 of which are combined degree programs. So with that, you'll have you know, uh, three plus one masters uh, and bachelors or, you know, your law program, things like that. And uh, basically, you know, like I said, it's just gonna be multiple opportunities to help you get set up in your career, you know, quicker and, and, uh, and more prepared. Um, really quick, this will be the, th the, excuse me, the six colleges that do uh, make up all of our academic programs. Um, the two to talk about really quick is going to be Farmer School of Business. Um, obviously, that houses all of our business programs. Um, it was ranked uh, 17th this year for U.S. public business programs. And then uh, Department of Nursing is a really good nursing program. It's still rather new on our Oxford campus. Um, one thing I want to say about that is that it is a uh, cohort kind of program. So they only accept freshmen directly. There's no pathway to get in as a transfer student or as a Miami University student later on. Um, so you'll just kind of want to keep that in mind if you are considering applying. Um, this is going to be all, a list of all of our majors. Um, all the way on the right side, you'll see we do have uh, several pre-professional programs. Um, essentially, those are set up to help you get into med school, uh, law school, dentistry, etc. And um, it's just kind of more catered advising, making sure you're doing those prereqs that you need for those programs and getting ready for applying. Um, we do have three different types of honors programs. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of scoot past this, past this one, but essentially three different honors programs, um, some of which do have a scholarship, some of which allow you to live in um, honors residence halls. 
Um, speaking of residence halls, we have almost 50 different options, over 30 living learning communities, which kind of help you get more acclimated to the community if you're not sure you know, what residence hall you want or you're not sure on what roommate you would want. Um, and then we've got over 26 dining options. So that's going to consist of three Starbuckses. Um, we've got kind of a cool sports bar, a sushi restaurant, um, kind of like a 60s, three, 60s themed diner. So definitely a lot just on the campus alone. And then uh, student groups and honor societies, Greek life is really popular. Um, and we are D1 athletics as well. So basically, if you're interested in partaking in athletics, uh, we are D1 in the Mid-American Conference. And um, I'd say hockey and definitely ice skating are our most popular for sure. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of speed through a little bit. It's just a little bit about Oxford, Ohio, a little bit about job opportunities. Um, one thing to point out here is that med school acceptance rate. Uh, 76 percent and then we actually have a really good law school acceptance rate 94 percent as well um, so that just kind of you know uh, bodes well for those that are doing the pre-professional programs and want to you know obviously apply to graduate programs later on um, finally dates deadlines tuition etc uh, being we are a public state university we do have a higher out-of-state tuition um, but thankfully we also have a higher out-of-state merit scholarship um, which I'll show in a quick second. Uh, one thing to remember if you walk away from here interested in applying is the date December 1st. Um, essentially, that's our priority deadline. Um, it qualifies you for early action too, which gives you kind of a, a little bit of a higher acceptance rate, um, but also ensures that you're considered for full merit scholarship. And that merit scholarship that I mentioned is shown right here. Um, like I said, it's higher for out-of-state students. And um, essentially, you just have to submit your Common App and you'll be automatically considered for that. Um, we started a GPA bracket and then uh, we kind of go from there with the rest of your application. And then I will go ahead and drop my, uh, my information in here, but um, really quick about Oxford, we're about 45 minutes, hour and a half north of Cincinnati, kind of your quintessential college town. Um, if you are able to visit at any time, shoot me an email, excuse me, especially if you're coming from out of state, I'll definitely, you know, try to make sure you can meet with a professor or see certain facilities, make sure it's worth your while and um, pass it on to the next university. Thanks so much for, uh, for sticking around. Well, um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, awesome. Go for it. Michigan State is next. Yeah. Oh, all right. Hi, everyone. My name is Isaac Cervantes. I'm with Michigan State University. I am the regional manager for recruitment in Southern California in the Southwest. So if you're tuning in from those areas, I am your regional admissions representative. If you're not, we definitely have a dedicated team um, in different, pox different pockets of cities across the US. So definitely stay connected. I'll be sure to drop that information so you can get connected with your um, representative. But let's go ahead and jump in and talk more about Michigan State. So to contextualize where we're located, we are in the Midwest in the state of Michigan. We are in the city of East Lansing. It's roughly about an hour and a half from Detroit, about three and a half, four hours from Chicago. And getting to East Lansing is very convenient. There are plenty of nonstop flights um, into Detroit and a very convenient transportation, the Michigan Flyer, that drops you off in East Lansing, um, just about three blocks from main campus. So to give you a little bit more of a visual of what East Lansing is like, it's also definitely a run-of-the-mill college town, so you can see there just some visuals of what to expect. Um, definitely a lot of great opportunities for students um, to frequent restaurants and cafes and different eateries, and everything is very much accessible. So you can see the campus on the far right-hand side here, um, just steps away from our downtown East Lansing. Very historic. We were founded in 1855, so you'll see those very... Um, quintessential historic academic buildings that are a brick, but we also have some really booming developments happening in our downtown area, whether it's lofts or different businesses. So definitely an exciting place to be. Talking more about the institution, we are definitely a larger institution, something that we're really proud of. So in terms of academics, we have over 200 areas of study to choose from within 17 degree granting colleges. Some of the programs that we're mostly known for are going to be within our areas of business. So we've definitely ranked top one in supply chain management. We have marketing, finance, management. We also have uh, unique programs such as packaging engineering. We also offer degrees in environmental sciences, biosystems engineering, um, and we also offer several professional degrees as well. So we do have a school of osteopathic medicine, a school of law, and a school of veterinary sciences. 
Um, outside of that, we are a larger um, institution in terms of student body. So you can see a total of 49,000 students, 39,000 more or less make up our undergraduate class. Um, if those numbers seem a bit large and you're looking for more of a smaller in, in, um, academic experience, we do offer three residential college options, which essentially provide students with more of a small private college experience. Those three residential colleges cover arts and humanities, Lyman Briggs for anybody interested in STEM or uh, pre-med, and then our James Madison College for anybody interested in pre-law um, or political science. So we are very much um, invested in ensuring that students get practical experience within their undergraduate time. And so these are just several ways in which we provide students those opportunities. So we do have a entrepreneurship and innovation center that's ranked top 10, top 15 in the nation. So this is for students who are interested in business. You don't particularly have to be a business major to um, utilize this service. We also have an entrepreneur, entre, uh, excuse me, entrepreneurship minor um, that roughly a thousand students pursue. We also are a top 100 global research institution. So um, expect for undergraduate research to be at the at essentially the forefront of your academic experiences. And we've also been ranked top 10 for our education abroad programs. Of course, we also have 900 clubs and organizations to get involved in um, and have the, na the nation's, uh, one of the nation's largest Greek life representation. So applying to MSU is very easy. There's three ways to apply. We have our application on our website, the MSU application. We're also on Common App and we also accept the Coalition App. Um, very easy to essentially submit um, essay response. Uh, there's really no letters of recommendation required and we are test optional for admission consideration as well as scholarship consideration. Keep in, rhyme, keep in mind our early action um, deadline has passed since it was November 1st, but we are still accepting applications applications for regular admission, um, which the deadline for that is February 1st. So to get connected with your uh, admissions representative or to learn more about uh, the criteria and in, in MSU in general, please visit our website at admissions.msu.edu. I'm also going to share my email um, so you can get in contact with me if you again are located in Southern California or in the Southwest states that include Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona. Thank you so much for your time and I'll go ahead and pass it on to the next school. Awesome. Thank you, Isaac. Um, next up, I believe, is Depa. Um, so go for it whenever you are ready. Michaela, are you there? Hi, sorry. There you are. You're totally fine. You are up next. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, awesome. Okay, hi, my name is Michaela Lockley and I am an admissions counselor here at DePaul University. So DePaul is a small school located in Greencastle, Indiana, which is right about 30, 45 minutes outside of Indianapolis. So you are in a safe small community, but you're close enough to a fun big city where you can go and do things, which I think is a perfect balance. Um, looking at who DePaul is as a group, we are a group of 1,700 students, right around. A large majority of those are in our College of Global Arts. However, we do have a growing and thriving school of music. As you can see, we do have a relatively diverse student body population, almost 15% of them being international from 35 different countries. Um, if you add up those top percentages, roughly 23 to 24% of our students are domestic students of color from 38 different states. And we do have about 22% of our students are first generation and 14% of them are legacy. We do have a ton of different um, on-campus opportunities and options to help those first generation students out, as well as all of our other freshman students, but specifically for those and I think that our legacy students, this 14% shows that our individuals have such a positive experience that they would like to come back and see their families members. So we do have um, 49 majors and 56 minors. As you can see, we do have our top 10 most popular majors listed on the screen, as well as four of our music degrees. So we are in the process of adding a school of business as well as two more DePaul music degrees. So those should be up and coming. And one other big thing about DePaul is our Fellows and Honors Scholar Program. So we have a variety of um, basically honors programs that will align with your major. 
So we have our management fellows, which is basically our honor school of business, media fellows, which is for journalism, broadcasting, things of that nature, um, science and research fellows. So if you're more STEM-based environmental fellows, if you're looking at environmental science, environmental geoscience, and our honor scholar, which is if your major does not fit into any of the above, those are things you can apply for afterwards. Our average GPA to get in is a 3.9. Our student to teacher ratio is eight to one. And our average class size is 17. So we are a very rigorous school looking for students who are going to push themselves and be involved not only academically, but within our school body as well. One thing that DePaul is super heavy on is sending students abroad. So the way our semesters are set up is it's a semester, a couple weeks, semester, a couple weeks. In those miniature semesters, or May term and January term, we send our students to over 100 approved programs on six different continents. Now we can do that for a short period of time or a longer period of time. So if you're looking to go abroad for an entire semester, that's where those programs are gonna kind of fill in. If you're only looking to go for a short period of time, you can go in those miniature semesters with a professor and it does not have to be one of your primary professors. It can be just one for an elective or one you might not know at all. We also have this thing called the Oven Lecture Series and I won't touch on it too much today, but just know that DePaul brings world leaders such as the ones listed on the screen to campus in order to kind of um, help broaden your perspective. I've talked a bunch and I'm gonna kind of explain like why this matters and some statistics about DePaul. So we do have a 97% placement. So 97% of our students within six months of graduation either have a next form of education. So med school, law school, grad school, dental school, or have a job. Um, we have an 84% four-year graduation rate. And if you are interested in pursuing a next form of education specifically in medicine or law, you can see here that 90% of our students have a first, um, get into medical school in their first attempt and 80% of our students get into law school in their first attempt. And internships is something that is super popular as well here. So we do have over 35,000 alumni and those are individuals who pour back into our DePaul students. So again, all people that are wanting you to succeed and um, we have an area called the Hubbard Center and that's where you go on campus, kind of reach out to those internships. A couple of examples of internships. We have the founder of ESPN that went to DePaul. So we send five students every year roughly to the ESPN headquarters. Um, we sent a student to intern with Delta Airlines and every third week she flew to the country for three weeks. Or sorry, for three days, not three weeks. Every three weeks she did that for three days. Um, and then we did have a student intern on the Ellen Show as well. So again, if you have an idea, DePaul is gonna make it happen to you. We are the second lowest um, for student debt in the state of Indiana and top 7% of lifetime earnings across all universities in the nation. So by coming to DePaul, you're investing in yourself and investing in your future. So you're gonna do really well. And so in relation to our application process, we are Common App exclusive and we are SAT, ACT test optional. So with that, if you don't know whether you should submit there or not, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat at the end of this session. And at that point in time, um, you can email me and I'd be more than happy to do a merit scholarship pre-read for you. I'll touch on that merit scholarship on the next slide. As you can see on the right side of this screen is some things I'm looking at. So letters of recommendation between one and three, kind of your curriculum, how hard are your classes, are you involved in your community in your school? And I recommend you write down everything you can from that activity section, even if it's just babysitting your younger siblings. We wanna see everything that you are up to. Scholarships and financial aid. We do have a merit scholarship, so a scholarship just for applying and getting accepted, and that is between 20 and 30,000. That is based on your GPA and your test scores if you choose to submit them. We do have additional DePaul scholarships, and we accept all forms of outside scholarships. If anybody has any specific questions on that, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But that is about all I have to say. We are Division Three for athletics, and we are um, really Greek life heavy, about two thirds of our students being involved in them. And I really hope you would consider DePaul. Thank you, Michaela. Next up, I believe we have the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Hi, everyone. My name is Kaylee Mattel, and I'm from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I am the regional rep, so I'm based out of Northern California, and I cover the Pacific Northwest, but I am any out-of-state or out-of-state admissions counselor as well. 
To get started, the University of Minnesota is a pretty large university. We have over 150 majors to choose from, as well as over 130 different minors. One of the perks about being a large university like ourselves is there's just so many different ways to tailor your education. So there's many ways where you can find your interests, your passions, and marry that together with overall your major, your career. We have one of the top four-year graduation rates in the country. A lot of schools actually will give you the six-year. Our four-year is actually seven. 78%. So it's a little bit actually pretty much higher than the national average. So when you are at the University of Minnesota, your advisor is going to make sure that you are declaring your major end of sophomore year and keeping you on track for your curriculum. Um, we have no impacted majors at the university because you do have to apply into one of our eight freshman admitting colleges. Our freshman admitting colleges range from our College of Science and Engineering. We have one of the very few schools of dedicated just to biological sciences. We have our Carlson School of Management, which is our business school, health and human development, agriculture, College of Liberal Arts, and so on. So when you apply to university, you do kind of have to have an idea of what it is you want to study. You can be undecided in these colleges, so you don't have to declare what major you want, but you do have to get admitted into one of these colleges. That way you're guaranteed your curriculum, your coursework, all of your entrance major coursework needed so that you are guaranteed to finish your curriculum in those four years. We are also a tier one research institution. So we are actually top 10 public research institutions in the country. We're right now ranked number seven. So if research is important to you, we are a great school for that. And research can be done. It's not just STEM major fields. It can be any major that you're in, non-science, science, Great perks with that is you can really work alongside professors that are doing research. You can work alongside other schools in the Big Ten network. You can work alongside schools outside the Big Ten network. You can even propose your own research opportunity and potentially get funded for that. So there's a lot of cool things. A lot of the innovation and a lot of cool inventions and techniques have come out of the university um, to start the retractable seatbelt that we all use every day was invented at the university. Uh, one of the best apples in my belief, the Honeycrisp apple came out of the University of Minnesota. The post-it note glue that you see on post-it notes came out of the University of Minnesota. Also with that, we have a a lot of cancer treatments have come out of the University of Minnesota, a lot of surgical innovations. So we are a great school for that. With that too, there are so much to get involved in, whether it's inside, outside the classroom. We are actually partnered with a lot of the big name corporations that are located in the Twin Cities areas. One of those is Target, which we all know and love. They actually help fund our business school and a couple of our other programs. So you could get that direct one-on-one -on -one mentorship as well as research, job opportunities. 3M, which is also a big name headquartered located in Minneapolis, also helps fund our College of Science and Engineering. So again, lots of cool partnerships. The university itself, I think the location is one of its strongest selling points. We do have a huge career advantage as well as such a diverse economy. We're also considered the second Silicon Valley of the country. There's a lot of tech companies headquartered in Minneapolis, as well as there's 17 Fortune 500 companies located in the Twin Cities alone. 19 Fortune 500 companies are located in the state of Minnesota, and I believe that has grown since I've last looked that up, but huge career advantage. So when you're thinking internship, job opportunities, opportunities, co-op opportunities, you have those right in your backyard. We also have a large alumni network. There's over half a million of us living across the world. So that's huge when you're thinking about moving to a new location or trying to find a job or trying to find an internship or really just wanting to have a sense of family anywhere you go. Our alumni chapters are really big and involved throughout the country. Here where I'm located in the Bay Area, we have a Golden Gopher Association and they get together for volunteer opportunities, different social events. They also get together for game watches, whether it's hockey or football, they have a local bar they go to and they get together and really connect. So having that sense of family is huge, I think, especially when you're thinking about the value you get after leaving the university. Our location of the Twin Cities as well, too, is Minneapolis, St. Paul. So St. Paul is the capital, so you already get an advantage being the capital right in your backyard. But we're also a big arts, music, Culture Theater Hub. We have the second largest Broadway seat per capita located in Minneapolis. They actually test a lot of the Broadway shows before they go, whether to New York City or on the road. So you can get student discount tickets to that. We have every single major league sports teams in the area that you can get student tickets to as well. And we're also D1 with over 20 D1 NCAA sports teams in which you can also take advantage of. Whether or not you like sports or like football, hockey, I say being in the Big Ten Conference is 
kind of unparalleled with a lot of other conferences in which these are big social events too. It's a great way to show your school spirit and it's such a good student experience that I encourage students to attend these events, whether or not they're interested or not in the sport. On here is also a map. It kind of gives you an idea of how easily accessible it is to get to Minnesota. We're in the Midwest. So from California, it's about three and a half from the West Coast, three and a half hour flight. Um, East Coast, it's about a three and a half hour flight. Minneapolis is also ranked one of the top airports in the country. A lot of people actually will go there early just to, you know, shop around and explore. Uh, so there's a lot of easy transportation to get to the city when you're coming out of state. Our scholarships for of students are listed here. They range from 2,500 to 15,000. They're all for your scholarships and they're all automatic with your applications. You don't need to apply separately for that. When you do apply, we're on the Common App and our own Golden Gopher application. There is a $55, but there is a fee waiver right now for the first 3,000 students that apply this month. All you would do is click Special Fee Waiver Program on the Common App or the Golden Gopher app, and then you can get a free application. I list our deadlines here, early action, second early action, regular deadline, doesn't matter when you apply by, won't give you an advantage. And we're also test optional too. So we just need self-report academic record and your application. But that's all I have for you. So thanks for tuning in and I'll pop in my email in the chat as well. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, next up and last tonight, we have Iowa State University. Hey there, everyone. Sorry for that delay. Um, thanks for joining the session tonight. Um, I'm Dan, I'm a regional admission counselor for Iowa State University. I'm based in Denver, Colorado, and I'm one of uh, two um, West Coast admission counselors we, we have for Iowa State. Um, I kind of cover the, the Northwestern portion of the U US, and then we have our, our other West Coast recruiter who covers the, the Southwest um, area of the US. So um, after tonight, if you have questions, you're welcome to send me an email and I would be happy to um, either connect with you or get you connected with, with your um, West Coast recruiter. Um, so I, at Iowa State, we're gonna be a large public uh, land grant tier one research university. Um, we're, on, we're also an AAU member university. Uh, the enrollment at Iowa State is about 31,000 students. Um, we offer men's and women's division one athletic programs. Uh, we're a member of the big 12 conference. Um, Iowa State is really kind of known for um, having some uh, top academic programs, um, some rigorous academic programs. We um, are certainly a leader in innovation um, and then um, entrepreneurship as well. And then we've been known to have one of the more beautiful campuses um, in the nation. Taking a quick look at where Iowa State's located here on the map. Um, so you're going to find us right in the heart of the Midwest, right in the um, center of Iowa. Um, Ames is very accessible, um, centrally located. So students that are coming from further away um, usually are going to fly into the Des Moines airport. And that's about a 35, 45 minute drive from, from campus. So pretty easy to get to and from um, Ames to the, to the airport. And there's a lot of direct flights that are, that are going out of Des Moines to, to the West Coast. Um, as you may be able to see on the map here as well, we're um, surrounded by some other major cities like the Twin Cities, um, Chicago, Kansas City, Omaha, uh, St. Louis as well. So when students are looking for those uh, internships or co-ops or maybe those opportunities after they graduate, um, there's a, that close proximity to a lot of those, those major cities really opens up a, um, a lot of opportunities for, for students looking for those opportunities. Um, we also have a large alumni network spread across the, 
U.S. and across the world. So um, if you end up coming to Iowa State, maybe you want to stay in Iowa or stay around a the Ames area, um, you'll have a great um, alumni network um, group built in there. But maybe you want to go back home to the West Coast, um, wherever you're from. Um, typically, there will likely be a, um, uh, I would say, alumni network in, in your area. Or if you want to try somewhere completely new out, um, you'll have that great alumni network um, already in place. So there's a number of different ways that students kind of find their fit at Iowa State or find that home away from home. Um, a few of them are listed here on the screen, but students can join um, any of our 900 different plus student clubs and organizations um, that are offered at Iowa State. Um, there's opportunities to study um, abroad on all, all continents, um, nearly every major, um, or I should say there's nearly a, there's a program nearly for nearly every major um, to study abroad. Um, we offer about 90 different learning communities at Iowa State, so those are uh, really important for new first-time students that are first stepping foot on campus, kind of help students build that, that network with other students in a similar um, area of study. Um, they'll also be upperclassmen that will serve as mentors and then faculty advisors as well, so um, great way to just build community, um, kind of make a larger university feel a little bit smaller. Um, right when students step foot on campus. Um, there's a number of different intramural activities that students can participate in as well at Iowa State through our campus recreation services. Um, and then we do have a great first year honors program. Um, and that's a great way for students to maybe gain some exposure to undergraduate research opportunities, connect with faculty. And then there's some really unique fun courses that, that students have the opportunity to take. And then after that first year honors program, students are, can choose to move on into their um, college-specific honors program. So on the screen here um, are going to be our six undergraduate colleges at Iowa State. We offer about 100 different majors. And we also have, a, the, here's a fun fact for you, the first public veterinary school in the nation was established at Iowa State. So we do have our College of Veterinary Medicine as well. But students will study anything from um, engineering to kinesiology. We have um, our Ivy College of Business, which has some really great programs. Um, and then we have a top five apparel merchandising and design program as well. When I'm talking to students from the West Coast, I tend to see a lot of interest in like our architecture major within our College of Design, um, our different engineering programs. Specifically on the West Coast, I see a lot of interest in like aerospace. And then our most popular major at Iowa State is going to be mechanical engineering. Um, and then within our College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, we have um, animal science, um, pre-veterinary medicine, um, and a great agricultural engineering program as well. And then for students that are really unsure when they get to Iowa State what they want to study, um, a pretty popular option within our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is our open option program, which allows students to kind of explore that first year before deciding on a major. And then if a student knows like they wanna be in engineering or they wanna be in business, each college at Iowa State also has an undecided option within that college. So students can explore a little bit that first year before deciding on a major. Taking a look at our application process that students can apply to Iowa State, um, two ways we are on the Common App or you can complete our institutional application on our website. Um, we have rolling admissions, we are test optional through um, 2022 right now. If there's any um, juniors or sophomores or freshmen in the, in the session, stay in touch with us and, and we'll let you know, or yeah, we'll keep you posted on, on what beyond 2022 looks like. Um, and then real quick, just because I'm coming up on time here, we do offer some automatic admission scholarships that range from $7,000 currently up to $11,000 per year. But I will go ahead and um, end there and I'll put, some information in the chat. Um, but thanks again for, for joining tonight. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Um, we do have some extra time tonight. Um, so I am going to invite all my participants to come back on, um, all my panelists, I should say, to come back on. And I am going to ask you all a question and we can just kind of go in the same order um, that you all presented tonight. Um, and I will share my screen with the question, just so we don't forget. Um, so. 
What is one myth that you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? All right, I have the, uh, the luck of going first. Um, I can't think of much. I would say uh, probably, this is a really good question. I would say probably activities uh, based on, you know, kind of the level of activity. Some students think that, you know, I have to be involved in a certain amount of athletics and, you know, the part-time job that I have doesn't matter or the tutoring I do on the side, you know, for my cousins doesn't matter. Um, I would say, you know, while those official activities are definitely good to have, you know, it's great to be the co-captain of the swim team and things like that. Um, I would list, you know, any and every activity that you're involved in um, just because it, it definitely could help your application for sure. Adding on to that, I would probably say um, the idea or the perception that maybe an out-of-state college is more expensive. I think uh, there are plenty of scholarship opportunities and reciprocity programs from different institutions that in many cases, the financial aid award um, kind of offsets some, some costs to where you might see some similarities or even some cases, even more of a, a better financial incentive to go out of state. So definitely keep your options and, and um, you know, ideas open for going out of state for college. Yeah, that was a really good one. Um, I think what I would like to debunk is if your GPA isn't the greatest, like you're not automatically out of every college. I know a large majority of the colleges here are looking at everything you do. They're not just looking at your GPA and saying, oh, like GPA is not the best, you're automatically out. We're gonna look at a lot of the things you do. So again, like um, Joseph said, write down everything you do, we're gonna look at, yeah, your whole application. Uh, one thing I would like to debunk is, I guess that all college admissions is the same because it definitely is not. So if you're looking at multiple schools, you definitely need to reach out to their admissions and because everybody looks at everything differently and there is no one size fits all when it comes to college admissions. Going last on this, I'm a little bit stumped. Um, all of those were great, um, great advice and I guess um, debunking myths. But the one that first came to mind and um, just to kind of go, go off of Isaac's, um, I think that don't narrow your search and your application to colleges by that price initially. Um, a lot of times, you know, private schools or out-of-state schools do have programs and, and scholarships in place to, to make it a lot more affordable for out-of-state students to go out-of-state um, for school. So I would say keep those options open and then, and then you'll get your financial aid package and um, um, maybe that'll help you make your, your final decision from there. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, and I do also want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you to the panelists and our attendees as well. There will be a quick survey after you close this window. It is about a five question survey, so please feel free to fill that out. We absolutely love the feedback. Please feel free to check out our website for more sessions, even if they are not the Western ACAC ones. Um, and our recording will be available at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time.